Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for the opportunity that we have to gather together as one church family here and around the world to worship you. Father, I pray that as we sing these songs to you, that our hearts would be open and prepared, ready to hear, receive, and act on the word that you have for us this morning. Father, you said you inhabit the praises of your people, and that's what we're getting ready to do. So as we praise you, we're excited about and we're expectant for your spirit to manifest itself in this place to touch every heart and every mind. We pray that your perfect will is accomplished in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. He's a master, savior, the coming king, and he's good to me. Creator of everything, he's good to me. And when I'm down, and when I'm down, and feeling low, and feeling low, there is somewhere I know I can go. He's good. He's good. Good all the time. He healed my body and he healed my mind. No better friend you will ever find. He's good to me. He's good. He's good. He's good all the time. He healed my body and he healed my mind. No better friend you will ever find. He's good to me. He is the King of Glory, the Lord of all, and He's good to me. My Redeemer, when I fall, He's good to me. And when I'm down, and when I'm down, and feeling low, and feeling low, there is somewhere I know I can go. He's good. He's good. He's good all the time. He healed my body and he healed my mind. No better friend you will ever find. He's good to me. He's good. He's good. He's good all the time. He healed my body and he healed my mind. No better friend you will ever find. He's good to me. No better friend you will Never find he's good to me. No better friend you will ever find he's good to me. No more bondage. No more bondage. No more bondage. No more bondage. Oh, now I'm free from the enemy. Do my son sets free. It's free indeed. No more bondage. Just glorious liberty. I don't have to be sick. No more. Don't have to be poor. No more. To be found no more by anything. No more sun has set free. You know it's free indeed. No more bondage, just glorious liberty. I got no more bondage. No more bondage. No more bondage. No more bondage. No oh, now I'm free from the enemy. Sun sets free, it's free indeed. No more bondage, just glorious liberty. I don't have to be sick, no more. Don't have to be poor, no more. Don't have to be found, no more. By anything, the sun has set. 
are free. You know it's free indeed. No more bondage. Just glorious liberty. I got no more bondage. 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 Oh, now I'm free from the end of me. Oh, now sun sets free. It's free. Just glorious liberty. Devil's under my feet. Under my feet. Yeah, it's under my feet. Under my feet. Oh, now my victory is complete. Jesus, for friends of God, he's made a show. Both and both and me. Under my feet. Under my feet. The devil's under my feet. The devil's under my feet. The sickness is under my feet. Under my feet. It's under my feet. Under my feet. Oh, now my healing is complete. Jesus, for friends of poverty's been a show. Both and both of me is under my feet. Under my feet. The kiss is under my feet. Under my feet. Father is under my feet. Under my feet. It's under my feet. Under my feet. Oh, now prosperity is complete. Come, Jesus, boy. Friends of power, see me the show. Of them, both the feet. under my feet. Under my feet. Under my feet. Under my feet. The devil's under my feet. Under my feet. It's under my feet. Under my feet. Oh, now my victory is complete. Jesus, what friends of power's he's made a show. Of them, both of under my feet, under my feet, the devil's under my feet, the devil's under my feet, Jesus, for friends of God, he made a show, of them, both of these, under my feet, under my feet, the devil's under my feet, the devil's under my feet. Oh, I believe, I 
I believe. Yes, I believe. I believe what he said. He said. Yes, I believe. I will always, always trust him. Trust him. Cause he has never failed me, and he never will. That's why I believe. God said it, God said it, I believe it, I believe it, and that's good enough, good enough for me. God said it, God said it, I believe it, I believe it, and that's good enough, good enough for me. God said it, God said it, I believe it, I believe it, and that's good enough, good enough for me. God said it, God said it, I believe it, I believe it, and that's good enough, good enough for me. I will always, always trust Him, trust Him, cause He has never failed me, and He never will, that's why I believe, that's why I believe, that's why I Amen. Turn That's why we believe. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. Well, you may be seated. Praise Glory God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad to be saved today? Yes. 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 Praise the Lord. Okay, you go ahead and get started. Well, let's welcome our visitors this morning. Amen. We are Amen. glad you're here. You are welcome. Welcome. We want to celebrate you today. And you know, you haven't found the church. You found the family. Amen. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. We're the family. And you know, we stick together. We cry together. We pray together. We stay together. And we Amen. shout together too. We shout together Amen. too. That's right. Glory to God. Amen. And so welcome. We're glad you're here. We welcome you and uh, check us out. Amen. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's see. I don't know where to go here. Do you want to do the church fellowships? Do you want to do the GoFundMe? Uh, well, what do we? What y'all got going? A lot. <laughs> Whole bunches. First thing, get a bulletin because there are so many details for so many things, and uh, sometimes you know I'd be up here half hour reading all this. But yeah, well, one thing we we, we got our GoFund. You know about that. That's what enables us to go wherever the Lord tells us to go and to minister wherever He tells us to minister without any kind of pressure on any church or group. I mean, we, we, there's been times in the past when it was just a group of Christians in an area wanted us to come and do a meeting, and so we went to do it and had tremendous meetings. So the thing is, it's not, we're not just limited to this, the churches that want us to come, but if there's a group, a Christian group or whatever in a city or something that wants us to come and do a tent revival or whatever, we're, we're, anywhere the Lord tells us to go, we will go. And that just helps us to be able to go and then not have to feel pressured to have to come up with so much money. Uh, a little quick thing on note on that, you know, we was in, in Fairbury doing a tent revival one year, and uh, we was, after the morning service, we was sitting in the church uh, fellowship hall having lunch, and a gentleman walked in, he drove, was driving through town, he saw the sign, and so he was from another t town here in Illinois, and so he said, well, he said, what do I have to do to have you come and do a tent revival. I said, we just need a piece of property. That's all we need. And if you want us to come, we'll come. But he said, well, how much would it cost me to put me on the front of the list? I said, you can't do that because we're going to go where God tells us to do. We're not motivated by money. And so, if, so for him to try to say, well, if I give you so much money, will you put us on the front list and come to our place first? <coughs> but we won't do that. We'll go wherever the Lord tells us. And we want to be where he wants us to be at the right time. And so that's just one of the things. So when we have, you know, when, when we're able to go, we go at our own expense. We always do that. And uh, so that helps us to do that and, it's, and, you know, and to do it properly. So, and there's a lot of things that goes into it, a lot of logistical things, you know, good advertisement. All those things are very, very important. And it all, it all costs money. So anyway, the GoFund helps us to do that. New church building. Amen. Well, if you don't know it, we got nine acres of ground one mile south of town here. And it's beautiful. It's flat. It's gorgeous. Unfortunately, they stuck a bunch of 
solar panels across the road from us, but that's, there's nothing we can do about that. And it's anyway, paid for. Yeah, and that property is paid for. So we was going to build the building before we, we moved in here, and uh, that was the time when then we had the major Fannie Mae, uh, Freddie Mac debacle. You all remember that? And the bank we was working with, who we was worked with for years, they, sh- they got bought out by a bigger conglomerate bank, and they shut down all commercial loans. And so we was in, we was in really, it was a mess. You know, the devil tried to just cause us major problems. But God opened the door. He led us here. So we did this. This is paid for, too. This property is completely and totally paid for. And so, uh, but we need a new building. And if you don't realize that if you watched the news yesterday, then you know that Iran has attacked Israel and that's a bad move on their part. But what it does is it opens up a whole lot of things, okay? Because, you know, Hezbollah is on the northern borders of Israel and has been for some time. And so that they're in Lebanon. Well, the thing is, they're backed by Iran. Now, there's a whole bunch of Iranians that have come across our border through Mexico through the last three years. They're, the many of them are here, and they're here for the purpose of waiting for an opportunity to do something like happened on 9-11. They want to do that, okay? Now, we have to back Israel. So when Iran attacked them, attacked Israel, because Israel did attack a military installation of theirs and took out several high-ranking officials, well, because they're at war. They do that. That's what you do. Anyway, bottom line is we have to maintain our covenant with Israel. We have to do that. Yes, yes. And the thing is that people say, why? Because I hear a lot of people you know, out here in the world that are saying, we shouldn't back Israel. We shouldn't do that. We should be taking care of our own borders. Well, we should take care of our own borders. But you've got to remember, this nation is different than every other nation on the face of the earth. This nation was founded in, 16, I think it was 1607, was founded for the purpose of the gospel to proclaim the gospel, to worship God, to do those things. If you read the Bible, the Bible tells us God blesses those who bless Israel and curses those who curse Israel. And so because we're Bible covenant people, that means we keep that covenant, and that covenant is with Israel as well. So that makes the United States of America and Israel as one because we're in covenant with one another. And, we were, and that's because our founding fathers dedicated us to the plan, the purpose, and the will of God. And as a result of that, that puts us in covenant with Israel. That makes us one. Now, every other nation in the world can turn against Israel. We can't. That's right. Because we're in covenant with them. If we don't, if we don't stick with them, we break a covenant that our founding fathers made with God because they made a covenant with the word. So we have to help them. Amen. And we have to back them and we have to support them. That's just the way it is. And uh, so because of that makes that makes us different. Anyway, so there's things that's happened. So that can open a whole lot of things up. Right now, we know that just recently, the Ukraine with our Secretary of State, their Secretary of State, they made an announcement that they're going to make the Ukraine part of NATO. Well, that was a big deal because Russia was always promised by us and all of NATO that they would not make Ukraine part of NATO because then that puts enemy weapons on their border. And so that would be like them coming and planting missiles on our border, you know, either in Canada or in uh, Mexico. We wouldn't want that. Matter of fact, if you go back to where the Cold War was, whenever John F. Kennedy was was president, they put them, they had missiles in Cuba. And that was too close. And we didn't go for that. Okay, so we, we was endeavoring to break that thing all down. And so that's, that's what happened. And so they, they pulled them all out. And that didn't, you know, it was part of the end of the Cold War. But the bottom line is we don't want them on our border. They don't want them on their border. We understand that. What that could do is open a door for them to feel like they've been betrayed and feel threatened. And so they are in, 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 in covenant pretty much with Iran. They were talking about Russia. Iran, China, North Korea, and... Uh, Let's see, that is that it? Yeah, so the four of them together. They have been doing military training exercises together for several months in the last, within the last year. So that's not a good thing. So that can open the door for nuclear war because Israel has nukes. 
And if they feel threatened, they will use what they have at their disposal. That can cause a lot of problems. So that's why we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for Israel. But we have to stand with them. And thank God we did have ships in place that were there to take out several of those. Right now, we don't have real good information. I was trying to get some from the Pearsons this morning, but they hadn't gotten around to it yet. Uh, what I listened to last night, what they was talking about live last night, uh, if you're not familiar with the Pearsons, that's uh, Eagle Mountain International <laughs> Church, Brother Copeland, that's, that's his ministry, and they are very closely linked with Israel. They're very closely linked with Billy Brim. Billy Brim's you know, got a place there in Israel. And so they got their, their fingers on the pulse of what's going on over there. So they are going to hear from people in Israel this morning at some time. And so I'm trying to get as much information from them as possible. But we have to remember, we have to stand with Israel. Yes. Okay, yes. so I said all that to say this, new church building. Yes. Well, that's because a harvest is coming in. The reason I say that is because this is set up for the fullness of Ezekiel 38 and 39. Israel is surrounded by enemy armies. And so, and there's been others that's not necessarily right on their border said, if Israel tries to fly things over their airspace to attack Iran or whatever, then they're not going to take it kindly. Well, so they're trying to shut them in and box them in. So that means Ezekiel 38 and 39 can come into fruition. That war can happen. That's not the apocalypse. That's not the war to end all wars, okay? So that can happen. If that begins to happen, if that was to take place, that will speed up the harvest. The harvest has got to come in. And the harvest of souls, and we're talking about around the world, but we're also talking about in our nation, that harvest has to come in. And so we want to be in a position to be prepared to deal with the harvest as it comes in. And so that's part of the reason we need to get a new church building. And so we're going to, uh, actually, we're meeting with another architect. We already got architectural drawings. We've had them for years because we were ready to build that building if they wouldn't have reneged on us. The bank reneged on us. They just shut down all the loans. But anyway, so we're going to meet with the architect again on Tuesday and with a different architect and go back over all the plans that we have, see if there's any adjustments we want to make to them so that we can get things moving in that direction. So we will officially kick off the church building fund. We've, we've, all, we've been talking about it, so people have started to give to it, but officially kick it off because we need to get that done and we need to be able to get it done as soon as possible. So anyway, that's, that's, and then we got a new truck and trailer and we're believing God for that as well. So well, that's a lot of stuff to believe God for. Well, if you know how big our God is, it's not. Huh? God's a pretty big God, isn't he? And we're not asking you to buy it all yourself. Amen. We're believing God. We're going to exercise faith and we're going to believe God. And so uh, we're just putting together some numbers on that so we can release our faith for that. Amen. All right. So also some other things we got going on. We've got church fellowships. You want to help with that? You've got the chi Chick Chat. Chick Chat. That's for the ladies. The ladies luncheon coming up. And that is April 27th at uh, 11 a.m. Bring your favorite dish. No desserts, please. We'll have some cookies and stuff, but that's, that's good. Uh, getting an, uh, so then we just bring a favorite dish and then something about yourself. Five minutes-ish. You know, we don't want, we'll be here all day, ladies, so because it is a chat. But anyway, and so we want to just have a good time of fellowship and get to know each other better. And then the guys are having one on May, where is it? I don't see it. Oh, the dudes, getting to know dudes, men's breakfast. That's May 4th uh, here at the church. The church will be, be providing the breakfast. And so bring yourself. Uh, just We need to sign up in the foyer so we know how much to prepare for. Same with the ladies. And then we'll, uh, Mother's Day is coming up, May 12th. Uh, that's another one. There will be no even service or connections at Youth Night. Uh, nursing Home Ministries, uh, May 11th coming up. They had Nursing Home yesterday. How did it go? Very good. Amen. That's better than good. That's very good. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, and then there's a brief nursery meeting immediately after service today. And that's it. That's it. Okay. Unless so you want to add to it. Well, as far as the men's thing goes, 
we're coming together just you know just, just to get to know one another. And so, because if you're new to the church, we encourage you to come and be a part of that. Uh, if you're not new to the church, we still want you to come and be a part of it because we want to spend time hanging out and just fellowshipping together. So we encourage you to come and do that. And we, like I said, we will be providing a breakfast and we're going to have a good time. Amen. And prepare for some other events. Yeah, and then we want to plan out some other events that we want to do for the guys. You know, because the gals have all, they're always doing stuff, and so we're not. We're not always doing things, but we need to do some stuff together and just have, some, have fun. So we want to get input from different ones about what we want to do and what we want to pursue. So I guess that's it, right? That's it. All right. Well, we're going to receive this morning's tithes and offerings. If you'd like to have an envelope for your giving, you can find one in the chair in front of you behind you. If there's not one there, raise your hands. I sure will give one to you. If you want to make out a check, make it out to Victory Family Church. If you're watching and like to give, you can give through PayPal, Cash App, or Tithely or text to give, whether title the same thing, amen. You like to give electronically in the church, you can do that as well, amen. Glory to God. We believe in God because we know God's a big God, great big God. Is, is, my God's a big God. How about your God? Amen. amen. And so we've watched God do some wonderful things, and we're expecting some big things, amen, here in the future. And, uh, and it's, been, it's been prophesied by a lot of different individuals things that the, the Lord said he was going to do. Brother Hagin, some prophecies that he gave that nobody even really knows about, uh, about what would happen in the end days, last days. I mean, talking about miracles and signs and wonders and, and financial increase and, and, and the you know, transference of wealth, you know, from the, from the riches of the wicked being laid, laid up for the righteous so we can do what God's called us to do. And one of the things he even prophesied, he said people that lost their hair will get their hair back. All these bald heads, people are rubbing their heads. Now, you you got a full head of hair. You don't think anything about that. But for those of us who it's turned loose on, we, you know, we, I mean, just bumping your head. I don't know who was with somebody recently, and they bumped their head, and, and uh, you know, and at least they had, no, they had a hat on. And said, so, man, good thing you had a hat on. And said, yes, yeah, because people with hair don't realize it. If you do bump your head and skin it, you don't see it. When we skin ours, everybody knows it. So anyway, Father, we thank you, Lord God, for everyone that's given us offering today. We thank you, Lord God, your word's true. You watch over to perform it, cause it to come to pass in each and every life. Lord, we thank you. That means that, Lord, as we give, you give back to us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. As we bring our tithes into the storehouse, storehouse, we know that, Lord, you open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing, and we don't have room enough to receive. You rebuke the devourer, Lord, on our behalf. Lord, we're called the delights of land. Our vine will not cast its fruit before the time. It will come into full fruition and produce maximum yield. And Father, we thank you and praise you for that. And we give you all the glory in Jesus' precious and holy name for every need of every individual being met, every bill they have is paid in full, and every need of this church is met, and every bill of this church is paid in full as well. In Jesus' name, amen. As we give the Lord's tithes and offerings, we're believing the Lord for Jobs or better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, settlements, estates and inheritances, interests and incomes, rates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, houses paid off, debts demolished, royalties received, pensions increased. We thank you, Father. For $250,000, cash check and money order, one lump sum from an unexpected channel for the work of the ministry to be a blessing to people. We thank you. It's ours. We have it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and receive the offering.
Jesus is my healer. Jesus is my healer. Jesus is my healer. Right now, Jesus is my healer. Jesus is my healer. Jesus is my healer. Right now, Jesus is my healer. Jesus is my healer. Jesus is my healer right now. Jesus is my healer. Jesus is my healer. Jesus is my healer right now. He takes away all my pain. He makes me whole again. Jesus is my healer right now. He takes away all my pain. He makes me whole again. Jesus is my healer right now. Jesus is my healer. Jesus is my healer. Jesus is my healer. Right now. Jesus is my healer. Jesus is my healer. Jesus is my healer. Right now. He takes away. All my pain, he makes me whole again. Jesus is my healer right now. He takes away all my pain, he makes me whole again. Jesus is my healer right now. I see me as healed. Yes, I see me as healed. I call those things that be not as though they were. Yes, I see me. in my spirit of a strong and healthy man when I pondered on the scripture it was drawn by the spirit's plan if I looked on the outside everything might say I'm sick but I see me as he I see me as healed. Yes, I see me as healed. I call those things that be not as though they were. Yes, I see me. got the image that God's had all along but while I thought upon the problem you know the picture was all wrong now 
now I'm thinking on the answer and I see what my father sees yes I see me as he I see me as he healed and strong yes I see me as he healed and whole all those things that be not as though they were and I see me as he the anointing is working in me the anointing is working in me the anointing working in me to set me totally free the anointing is working in me the anointing is working in me the anointing working in me to set me totally free it drives away every pain it drives away every pain it drives away Every pain in Jesus' name. The anointing is working in me. The anointing is working in me. The anointing. Working in me to set me totally free. It drives away every pain. It drives away every pain. It drives away. Every pain in Jesus' name. The anointing is working in me. I believe in the anointing.
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Said out loud, Lord, let the river flow. The river of your spirit. The Holy Ghost. Let that river flow. Let it touch hearts and change minds and save souls and heal bodies and set the captives free. Let that river flow, God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Say it aloud, for the Lord is good and His mercy endureth forever. Say it again, for the Lord is good and His mercy endureth forever. One more time, for the Lord is good and His mercy endureth forever. Turn to somebody and say, my God is a good God. How about yours? Shake their hand this morning and tell them you love them. You can be seated. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God forevermore. Father, we are thank you, thankful for the privilege we have to come into your presence again today. We thank you for the precious, mighty Holy Spirit who lives great big on the inside of us. We thank you for your anointing upon us, enabling us to preach, teach your word, both effectively and accurately. And Father, we thank you for the anointing upon each and one to receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save, restore, renew our souls, minds, wills, and emotions. And we thank you and praise you for it in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Now, for those of you who say, well, why did you have them change that song? It's because I, uh, you know, the way I minister, I minister by inspiration. And so I have to have the right spirit in order for us to move and operate effectively and properly. Amen. And so sometimes we hit this right song, sometimes we don't. Amen. But. That's the purpose. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because that way we can flow the way the Spirit of God wants us to flow. Amen. Brandiste para kushka bala vefe. Este frenonso sotunda ranansi se prake. Gride shish tu dura dadsa se brevefe. Drasinonda angro duchke le bam brushti pele vefe. Este fredo sondo. Croshonondra na masi chadea, vradi se fedora da sotonda la mabraki, es felenonje, dranske da roduchke la ba, maharenia sonongo la la bagresh de donde, iste fele doja rasusta brakishke vendolo noso subrandiast. Yea, the enemy would have you to get into fear. There's many things that are going on in the world today. And the enemy would have you to cow down and to stay at home and to get into fear, afraid of what this may happen or what that may happen. But understand, saith the Lord, I'm Almighty God, and I'm God all by myself, and there is no other. And I am Almighty, and I am all-powerful, and I am all-creating. And I have the ability to deal with the enemy and put him back under your feet, but you must walk in faith and exercise that faith and remind the enemy that you know who you are in me and who I am in you. You must walk in faith. You must resist the temptation to fall prey to fear, and you must stand your ground, and you must boldly declare and decree that you are a child of the Most High God. You must boldly declare and decree that the devil's defeated and under your feet. You must boldly declare and decree that my power is working on your behalf, and I'm here. I have angel armies. Yes, I am the God of angel armies, and I have angel armies 
armies that I can dispatch to protect and watch over you. My spirit can move on your behalf and cause the enemy to come to naught in your life. I'm able to turn things around. That which the devil meant for bad, I can use it for good. And I can use it to draw people to myself, saith the Lord. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. This is not a time for you to get in fear. This is not a time for you to get all upset. This is a time for you to understand who your God is. This is a time for you to understand who you are in me, saith the Lord. This is a time for you to rise up and boldly declare, God is my God, the creator of heaven and earth, and I'm well able to do everything my word says I can do. And I will defend you, protect you, watch over you, provide for you, heal you, deliver you, and set you free. Because that's what I do, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yes, 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 yes. Bradiche Fevenusna, Moshkalara bambrandias am badu jolotos kaye adradise se fefe dandola mafrade and watch what i do watch what i do on behalf of my children israel Yea, yeah many many other nations they could rise up they could come to help but they won't and yea that's because i'm the one that will rise up I'm the one that will defend them. And all will know that their God is still alive and well. All will know that their God is well able. I've defended them throughout history. I've brought their enemies to naught. I've defeated their enemies on their behalf. And yea, I'm still the same God today as I was back then. And I'll do the same thing now. For they think they will do this or that or whatever. But yea, saith the Lord, I will provide protection. I will deal with the situation. I've done it throughout history and watch me do it again. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Stand up if, if you would and grab hands with somebody next to you. We're going to pray for Israel right now. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we pray for Israel. Lord, we thank you for protecting them. We thank you for watching over them. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Father, we mix our faith together. We touch, Lord God, in faith, agreeing, Lord God, that you move on their behalf. And Father, we thank you no weapon formed against them will prosper. And every tongue that rises against them in judgment shall be condemned. Lord, that includes many that are here right in the United States. Lord, they're trying to condemn Israel. But Lord, that shall come to naught as well. And Father, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for giving our leaders strength that they'll understand that they must stand with Israel. They must help defend those chosen people. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, that they'll do just that. And Father, we thank you as a result of it. Lord, you'll help to turn their hearts towards you. And Father, draw them to you. We command blinders to come off of the minds and the eyes of those in government, Lord, so that the light of the gospel will shine forth in them brighter than the noonday sun. And Lord, we ask you to bring laborers down their path to compel them to know Jesus, that they might be born again. And we give you glory and honor for that, Father God. For Father, this is a big deal. This is a big deal. But Father, we're not afraid of it. We're rejoicing because we are living in a position that we get to see prophecy fulfilled before our very eyes. Lord, to see, Lord God, these things spoken of throughout the old covenant. Father, we see them manifested today. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, that, you're just, that just shows us you're the same God you've always been. 
And Lord God, that just lets us know when the word of God says Jesus is coming back, we know we got a place to go and we know who we're going with. And Father, we're not afraid of it. We're not scared of it. But Lord, we're excited about it. We just don't want to go until it's time. We want to take as many people with us, Lord, as we can. And Father, we thank you for a harvest. There's a harvest coming in. A harvest of souls. Men, women, boys, and girls. And Father, we thank you. We're going to ride the wave of this new wave of revival. And Lord God, we're, going to, we're not going to miss it. We're going to ride it, Lord God. Hallelujah. And Father God, if you tarry, we'll ride another one. But Lord God, I'm convinced this is the last one. And Father, we thank you, Lord God. Just as I've said in the past, surfers don't come out of the water till they're ready to go home. Father, we ride this wave in, Lord God, and ride it right on in, Lord God, into glory. Right on into your presence. Right on into the marriage supper of the Lamb. Right on into heaven. And Father, we give you all the glory for it. All the honor and all the praise in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, you can be seated. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. All right, if you would, open your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, we started talking about this on Wednesday night, and I didn't get through it all. Uh, I kind of sped it up a little bit to try to, you know, just finish up the evening. But there's some things we need to talk about. One of the things we said, and I encourage you, if you go back and listen to it, it'd be good for you. But one of the things we said, talking about the subject of faith. Now, faith, you know, many people don't realize it because they want things to happen whenever they want them to happen. How many of y'all ever been there? You know, if you want something, you order something, you want it tomorrow. And unfortunately, you know, a lot of what we've had gone on in society over the last several years has kind of really been detrimental to the church rather than being a blessing, you know. Now, don't get me wrong, getting things quick is, is nice, but it's not always a blessing because it makes us think that God just going to be at our every whim and that if we pray and ask God to give us something, it's going to show up on the Amazon truck tomorrow. <laughs> But it, God doesn't work that way. Y'all listening? Amen. And so the thing we talked about was this, this, and I encourage you, it would be good for you to jot it down. Faith does not have a watch. And faith does not have a calendar. Amen. Nowhere in the scripture does it tell you that if you pray the prayer of faith, and release your faith for something that is going to happen at a specific time. Nowhere in the scripture does it tell you that. But people seem to think that that's the way it is. And one of the reasons that it's, it, it, it causes people to stumble or causes people so many problems is they'll wait to exercise their faith until they have to have what they're believing for in 10 days. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. See, if you're believing God for finances to pay your bills, then how many realize you know your bill comes due at a certain time every month? That's right. So if you're believing for God to supply your need, it's not something you should do 10 days before the need has to be met. It's something that you should be boldly declaring and decreeing every single day of your life. Yes. And you should do it in the morning, and you should do it in the yeah. afternoon, you should do it at nighttime. You should boldly declare and decree those things so that they're working in your life all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Don't wait until just this bill's due, and then I'm going to focus my faith on this bill, and because faith doesn't have a clock, faith doesn't have a calendar, and it doesn't say that God is going to do it at that specific time just because you need it at that specific time. Now, I'm not saying God can't come through because he does. Yes. But the yes. point I'm trying to get across to you is understand that faith does not move by time. Right, right, yeah. Faith is moved by you believing and exercising what the Bible says to do and confessing and standing and yeah. doing the yeah. providing the proper corresponding actions to your faith so that it comes to pass. But the thing you have to realize is individuals that have received some of the most phenomenal things from God didn't get those things because they prayed one day and said, I'm going to have it in 10 days. 
there's people that prayed. Some of you have heard me tell the story about Sister Sumrall. Dr. Lester Sumrall's first cousin, first cousin George's wife, Thelma. She was diagnosed with cancer. They'd done, done a double radical mastectomy. That means they removed both of her breasts. They removed all the lymph nodes out of her arm and everything, and they gave her just weeks to live. And so we got the phone call about the situation, asked if we'd go pray for her, and we said absolutely we would. We got over to the house. We had to make an appointment to get in, and we got there, and she looked like death warmed over. And she was, you know, she just just emaciated, you know, from the cancer. And so the Lord spoke to me on the way over there, and he said this to me. He said, ask her if she's willing to do this. And he gave me four scriptures to give to her to confess 50 times each, four times a day. For how long? He didn't say stop. He just said do it. And he said if she says she will, then you can pray for her. But if she won't, then you cannot. Y'all listening? So what she was doing by her confessing those scriptures was she was declaring what the Word of God said about her situation. Amen? But if she wouldn't have been willing to do it, the Lord told me, you can't pray for her. But she said she would. And so we laid hands on her. The power of God went into her. I mean, it's one of the most strongest anointings I've ever experienced in my ministry. But she looked no different at all. Now, some of you have heard me tell this story before, but I'm using this for the sake of illustration to understand that there's no clock or no time with faith. And so because, and it seems to me that the people that have a tendency to get a hold of this the most are the ones that have no hope. Mm -hmm. So they just do it. Because if they don't do it, they're dead. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You understand what I'm saying? And so in this particular case, she did exactly what she, we told her to do, what the Lord said to tell, to tell her to do. And so anyway, she began to confess those scriptures. And so we saw her again 18 months later. Now, the fact that we saw her 18 months later lets you know that God did something because they only gave her a couple of weeks to live. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Y'all listening? And one of the things people need to understand, if you've been given a terminal diagnosis and they tell you you've got a, a day, a week, or a month to live, if you make it past that day, something's happening. Yeah. If you make it past that week, something's happening. Yeah. If you make it past that month, something's happening. That's right, that's right. And so you just keep doing what you know to do. Because the fact that you're still able to do it means something's taking place. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And you're not moved by how long it takes. You're just moved by knowing it will take place because that's what God said. Yes. God's not going to fall off the throne. He's going to continue to stand and he's going to continue to do what you confess his word said he would do. Yes. Amen. And so in her particular case... You know, we got to talk to her 18 months later, and when we I got to talk to her about what was going on, how it all came about and stuff, and she said, Brother David, she said, for the first you know, couple of weeks, she said, I really didn't notice the difference. But she said, after about three or four weeks, when she was supposed to have been dead, she was still alive, she said, I began to notice something a little bit different. And when I looked at myself in the mirror, I looked a little bit different. And I had some strength that I didn't have before. And so she said, I just continued to do it. And I continued to do it and continued to do it. And I got stronger and stronger and stronger. And I noticed my hair was coming back and all these other things was happening. And I realized this is working. Oh, yes. yeah. This is working. Yeah. Hallelujah. I made her want to do it though all the more. Yeah. And then after about four months or so, five months, she was totally healed. Went back to the doctor and they could find no cancer. Yeah. And we saw her 18 months later. Well, we, I said this, you know, on our 20th anniversary, ministry anniversary, she sent a video. That was 20 years later. She was given two weeks to live. 20 years later, she was still alive and well. Y'all listening? And we shared a couple other instances with individuals, you know, on Wednesday night. Individuals that had, you know, been diagnosed. One lady had lupus. And she was in the final stages of lupus and given up to die. And she only had a short time to live. We're talking about weeks. And the pain would get so bad, she'd be laying in the floor in agonizing pain. But she'd be cold, begin to de declare and decree, devil, get out of my body. Lupus, get out of my body. Sickness, get out of my body. 
I'm healed. I'm the healed of the Lord. The Bible says Jesus bore my sicknesses and my diseases. And with his stripes, I'm healed. I am the healed of the Lord. He sent his word and healed me and delivered me from my destruction. She began to boldly declare and decree those things. And she did it all day long and all night long. Think about it. All day long. Now, she's hurting. She's in the floor. She's in the final stages of lupus. That's a painful arthritic condition. Painful. But she continued to boldly declare it and decree it and did it for a year. And a year later, she was totally healed. But she did it for a year. Another young lady that was diagnosed, just in her 20s, diagnosed with cancer and, you know, supposed to die. She did the same thing. She was in Buffalo, New York. She did the same thing. She began to boldly declare and decree cancer had no right to be in her body. She just told the devil, devil, get out of my body. Cancer, leave my body. My body is healed. The power of God's working in me. The Bible says he sent his word and healed me and delivered me. Hallelujah. He's the one that said, I could say to the mountain, be removed. So I say to the mountain of cancer, be removed and be cast out of my body. And she confessed it over and over again, all day, all night. Two years later, she was totally healed. She did it for two years. Now that takes some tenacity, doesn't it? Now, she was just given weeks to live. So when the third week came around, something's happening. When a month came around, something's happening. When two months came around, something's happening. When six months came around, something's working. When a year comes around, she's still here. Something's working. Y'all listening? So we got to get tenacious. But we got to understand as well that there's no clock. Faith does not have a watch. Right. And it doesn't have a calendar. Right. Y'all listening? Yes, See, that's one of the areas where when we talk about faith is we don't stress that enough. Because when we talk about God's answering prayers and doing things and people believe in God for things and stuff, you know, sometimes, you know, people don't realize how long somebody stood and believed before it came to pass. Y'all listen to what we're saying? And we got to stand. That's we got to continue that corresponding action. And part of that corresponding action is telling the devil to get out of your body. Now, I've said this before. You've heard me say it. You can't be mamby-pamby with the devil. I'm reading the Bible through in the CEB version, complete English Bible. And whenever it talks about Jesus speaking to the devil, it says it this way in the CEB. It says, and he spoke harshly to the demon. Or he spoke harshly to the sickness. Yeah. He spoke harshly to it. Yeah. That gave me a revelation. That means you don't say, please leave my body. <laughs> you have to command that thing yeah. to leave your body. Yeah. You have to declare that that thing has to leave your body. You have to boldly decree that thing's leaving your body. You can't ask it nicely. You're dealing with the devil that's trying to kill you. You're dealing with the disease that's trying to destroy you. You're dealing with something that can take your life. You can't just be nice to it. You've got to speak to it with authority, and you've got to tell it to get out of your body. Just like you would tell a stray dog if he got in your house. You would chase that dog out. Get out! You'd get a broom and you'd chase him around the house, would you not? I mean, some people get a gun, make sure he didn't come back in the house. They just would. The point I'm making is you just don't let it happen. I've heard a lady, you know, she. Uh, this, I, I saw this on the news here a while back. I say news, it was on, you know, on the internet. But anyway, this uh, coyote went to grab her dog. And she went out there after that coyote and made that coyote turn that dog loose. <laughs> Now, I don't think she did it by saying, Coyote, please let my doggy loose. I imagine she went out there with a stick. And we need to take the stick of the word 
It's an offensive weapon. Yeah. The Bible talks about being a sword. Yeah. Yeah. We need to take that. We need to get after the devil with it and start telling that thing to get out of our bodies, oh, yeah. to get out of our life. If you're believing for your children, you leave my children alone. Get your hands off my kids. If you're believing for your spouse, you command that thing, get your hands off my, my husband. Get your hand off my wife. You're not destroying this family, devil. You get your hand off of my family. And you get after it. And you declare that. And you decree those things. Because it's extremely important. Amen? So, let's look here at Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Notice it says the world was framed by the word of God. Now, when we think about that, we think about the fact that the world, in essence, was framed or put together by the words that came out of God's mouth. I think about that. I think about construction. You think about you see a home being framed up, you know, carpenters framing up. Well, the Bible says here that the worlds were framed by the words that came out of the mouth of God. And the thing is, God created us in his image, and he gave us the ability to procreate. You all out there? And he gave us authority over the enemy. And we can utilize that authority in the earth. And we're supposed to do that. So that means what we say will frame our world. And if we say positive things, then we're going to have a positive outcome. That's right. If we talk about how bad everything is, we're framing a world of destruction. But when we speak what the Word of God says, we're framing a, framing a world of victory. Yeah. Our life can be full of victory. Yeah. Our life can be full of joy. Our life can be full of peace. Yeah. But we got to speak to that situation. we got to speak into our life, and we got to... Understand the significance and the importance of what we say makes a difference in what happens to us. Are y'all listening? What we say makes a difference in what happens to us. Life and are where? The power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So the Bible says life and death are in the power of words. Yeah. 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 See, words are seeds. They're containers of either life or death, yeah. health or disease, right. poverty or abundance. That's right. mm -hmm. yeah. Those words we speak contain, whatever they we speak about, they contain something. And if we're always talking about how we're never going to make it, how we're never going to have enough, how we're never going to get this done, it's never going to work for us, all we're doing is framing a world of destruction. Yeah. That's right. yeah. When we start talking about, bless God, my God supplies all of my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I've been empowered yeah. to yeah. prosper. Hey. I've been empowered to succeed. Yeah. I've been empowered to rise above yeah. those things that bring everybody else down. Hey. Are y'all listening? Yes, and I want you to get a hold of that truth. Uh -huh. yeah. Because Janet and I are declaring that over you multiple times a day. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's right. We do it every morning before we get out of bed. Thank you, when we pray, we declare over every one of you. That you, because the Bible says this. In Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says, and God created them and then he blessed them. Yes. And the word blessed means empowered to prosper, yes. empowered to succeed, empowered to rise above what brings others down. Yes. 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 And so we, we declare that over you every single day. Y'all listening? Yes. Yes. We declare it. Yes. We say, God, we declare this over us our children, all of our church family, all of our partners, we declare that each and every one of us are empowered to prosper. We are empowered to succeed. We are empowered to rise above what will make everybody else go down. We're going over. We're empowered to do that. And we declare that over every one of them. 
Every one of them. And then we talk about favor. That you have favor. That we have favor. We have favor with, first of all, God and favor with man. And we say, we have favor with law enforcement if we need it. We have favor with a businessman if we need it. We have favor with a banker if we need it. We have favor with an attorney if we need it. We have favor with people that can determine whether we can use their property to preach the gospel in a tent. We got favor with them. We got favor in every area of our life that we need favor. We have favor. And we declare that you have favor. How many of y'all want that favor? Amen. You want us to continue to declare these things over you? Then you ought to start declaring over yourself. And declare them over Janet and myself. We ought to be declaring these things over one another because we're part of a family. Hallelujah. And we declare it. We decree it. Say it aloud. I, I am, empowered am empowered to prosper. To prosper. I, I am empowered to succeed. To succeed. I, I am empowered to rise above, rise above what brings everybody else down. Everybody else down. And, I have, and I have favor with God and man. God and, man. and whoever I need favor with, I will have favor, not just regular favor, divine favor, orchestrated by God. People will say to me, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm just going to do it anyway. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You ought to boldly declare and decree that over yourself all the time. Every time we eat, a ma- eat our meals, every time we pray over our food, we declare that over you. Amen? Why? Because that's the word. And we need to get to the place God wants us to be. We're not going to get done what God wants us to get done if we're not prospering, if we're not succeeding, if we're not rising above. If we're going down, if we're going under, we're not going to get done what God wants us to get done. So we're not going under because God had to go under for us to go under. God ain't going under. He hasn't gone gone under this time, this far. He ain't about to start now. He doesn't fall off the throne just because things don't look good. He's still high and lifted up. His train still fills the temple. You got to remember, when he speaks, doorposts shake. Hallelujah. Heaven shakes. Angels start flying around declaring things. When God speaks, great things take place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so he's given us his word, and all we got to do is speak his word. That's right. Declare what he said. Yeah. Well, it doesn't look like in the natural, but you're not serving a, a natural God. You're serving a supernatural God. Yes. So frame your world with the word of God. Yes. Frame your world the way God sees you. Yes. See yourself the way God sees you. Yes. If you're battling symptoms, see yourself healed. Yes. See those things gone. Yes. See yourself well. See yourself full of faith. See yourself full of health. See yourself full of strength. See yourself full of power. See yourself that way. And then declare those things. If you don't declare those things, you won't see yourself that way. The world's looking down on everything and everybody. And they want us to look down on ourselves because the devil knows if we do that, he knows that there's life and death in the power of the tongue. See, he knows what the Bible says. He knows the worlds were framed by the words that came out of the mouth of God. How does he know? He was there when it happened. Yes, he was. And he knows God created us in his image. And he knows that God gave him authority or gave, gave us authority. Amen. So when we declare and decree these things, they come to pass in our lives too. I mean, you got to get this mouth going for other things than just getting yourself in trouble. Are y'all with me? Uh All right, turn, if you would, back to James chapter 1. I don't know if you get anything out of this or not. I pray that you are. Hallelujah. I know we talked about it some on Wednesday night, but repetition is the seed of learning. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. And remember this. Remember this, Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, Jesus, when he got through telling them about the parable of the sower, 
And he began to explain things to him. He said, you know, he said, you don't take a lamp and put it under a bushel. Remember that? Yes. He talked about those things. And then he also said, take heed what you hear. Yes. Now, what that literally means when he said, take heed what you hear, is was not that you shouldn't just listen to negative things. You shouldn't. But what he's saying is that listen to what you hear. And don't let it just go in one ear and out the other. That's right. That's right. Take heed what, there's, what we're speaking into your life. Listen to it. And don't just listen to it once. Because you won't get it once, just once. Y'all out there? You got to listen to it. Take heed. Give effort to what it is you're hearing. Because he also went on to say, well, matter of fact, let's just look at it. Hold your place right here. We'll get back to it in a second. But turn to Mark chapter 4. I want you to see it with your own eyeballs. Mark it in your Bible so that you can go back and look at it again. Uh, verse 24, Mark chapter 4, verse 24, and he said unto them, take heed what you hear. Now, how do we know that this is not just talking about not listening to bad things? Because he goes on to say in the same text, with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you. So he's joining these two things together. So if he was just saying, don't be listening to the wrong thing, he wouldn't have said this. Matter of fact, I'm going to switch it to the Amplified Bible to help you see it even more clear yet. And he said that be careful what you're hearing. In other words, listen to what you hear. Be careful. Don't let it just go in one out of the other. Don't just let it blow by. Don't, give it, don't ever get into the place, I heard that before. Never do that. Because the Bible is progressive revelation, and the more you hear it, the more revelation comes from it. One is because you weren't mature enough the first time you heard it to be able to grasp it all. And so the next time you hear it, you matured some, or should have, so you can grasp more of it. And then the next time you hear it, you should have matured some more, and you can grasp more of it. Why do you think when they go to school... Or used to, I'll put it that way. I don't know now what they teach things. But, but back years ago, when you went to school, they started teaching you things, and they started teaching you math. Mm -hmm. All right? And so they would teach you the simple things. <coughs> but it was still math, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wasn't it? Yeah. And then you went back the next year, and then they would go back over some of those things you was taught the last year, mm -hmm. and then they'd add some more. So they'd go from addition and subtraction to maybe multiplication the next year, and then you go back, and the next year you get division. And then you get fractions. Huh? And as you move on, then it's still all math, isn't it? But see, if you didn't listen to what they taught you the first one, and then the second one, and didn't do anything with what you heard, Come on, get this. This is real. Yep. Now, you know, I thought that everybody just got that. I mean, because when I was in first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, you know, I just thought everybody got, they got the addition, they got the subtraction, they got the multiplication, they got the division, they got the fractions, they got all that. But then when I was in the Army, because I dropped out of high school, and I had reasons for doing it, and so then I went and joined the military, went in the military, and so I was going to go back to school and get my diploma. And so I had to go, and the thing is, they wouldn't let me start up here. I had to go back and take math with everybody else. Because, I, and I just figured that everybody at least had these basics. Yeah. Until I'm sitting in the classroom, and they couldn't even add. We're talking about guys in their 20s. Couldn't even add or subtract let alone multiply or divide. And when it got the fractions, they were blown out of the water. And I was shocked. 
but they just didn't do anything with what they were taught. They didn't do it. They was they came in homes where they weren't required to give any effort to what they were taught in school. We were required to do homework, weren't you? So in essence, what we were doing is we was giving effort to the things we heard. And even though all of it was math, we had to take it one step, and then the next 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 step, and the next step, and the next step. And then it would turn into algebra, which was still math. Y'all listening? And then you get to geometry. Still math. And you worked your way up. Well, I never got that far. I never got the calculus or any of that kind of stuff. Adam loves that stuff. I mean, he just loves it, you know. He's shaking his head no, but he does because he, he, he's... I mean, he, but he's, he, because he sits there at home, we got a problem, someone's trying to figure something out. I mean, he's like all over it, you know. And so the thing is, one of the things that happened to me when I got into high school, I began to get involved in other extracurricular activities, which took more of my time. Not for the better. <laughs> I mean, I, once I got my driver's license, I had a car, and I'd drive to school. And there was many, many days that when I pulled out of the driveway, I had the greatest intentions of getting to school. But if I ran across someone on the way, yeah, anyone, it didn't have to be anybody <laughs> special, if I ran across someone on the way into the school that said, hey, you want to cut? I was like, I thought you'd never ask. And away we would go. And back then, gas was only 25 cents a gallon. So you could ride around the back roads. You had to stay away from the you know, city. You had to stay away from the cops and truancy officers and stuff like that. You understand what I'm saying? And those things begin to draw on my attention because I was very good in it before I got to that place. And then when I got distracted, I wasn't putting any effort into it and I wasn't getting anything out of it. Y'all out there? So it's the same way when it comes to things you're hearing, things that you're being taught. And, and I'll say that. The Lord just said, and don't forget this, you're responsible for what you hear. Responsible to God for what you hear. So he goes on and says this. And he said to them, be careful what you're hearing. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you and more besides will be given to you who hear. So that means you make a decision on whether you hear or not. Just like you to make your decision on whether you're good ground, wayside ground, stony ground, or thorny ground. That's your decision. It's not God's. That's yours. That's right. You make a decision. Are you going to be good ground? You're going to keep the weeds out? You're going to keep the rocks out? You're going to, be, you're going to keep your heart pliable so that the word can get planted in your heart? And then you're going to do something with what you hear? You're going to give thought and study to it? You're going to give effort to it? Because if you do, that will determine the amount of virtue which is strength and power, right. and knowledge, which is revelation, yeah. that will come back to you as a result of what it was that you heard. Amen. Now, I know I've talked about this before, but we need to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. And when it comes to what we're talking about right now, de decreeing and declaring these things, framing our world by what the Word of God says about us, rather than buying into what the devil's trying to tell us yeah. and how we're not going to, this is not going to happen, this is not going to happen, this is going to happen. There's no rapture, there's no this, there's no that. Oh yeah, there's a rapture and it's coming. And God's still on the throne. And God's still on our side. And God's there to protect us. And God's there to provide for us. And God's there to put us over the top. No matter how bad it seems, God still hasn't fallen off the throne. He's still there. Amen. 
Now, we may be learning things in the process. Hello? And the key is, is to learn. Hallelujah. But see, the Word is so important to us. It's so important to us. And really, to be honest about it, if we want to hear God speak to our hearts, we need to hear Him speak to us through His Word. Hallelujah. So he said, the measure of thought and study we give to the truth we hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you who hear. More besides will be given to you who hear. So in other words, if we'll give effort to it, then we're going to get more, but then there's going to be stuff added to us just because we gave effort to what we did have. We're going to get more. Just like the Bible says in John chapter 4, that in these last days, we're going to reap where others have sown. We didn't do the work they did, but because we're faithful to follow God, we're going to reap where they sowed. Now that's good news, isn't it? But if we're not faithful to do the meat that Jesus said, he said, I have meat to eat you don't know of, don't know of, and that is to reach the lost. Why did he come? The Son of Man came to seek to save the lost. That woman of Samaritan well was lost. Those Samaritan, I mean, you know, those individuals were lost. You understand what we're saying? So he came for them to get saved. That's what he wants for them. Hallelujah. So he had meat to eat they didn't know of. And that's to do the will of the Father. And then as a result of us doing it, then we'll be able to reap where others sowed. And we didn't have to do the sowing. So he said, we'll get more. If we give effort to what we do here, we'll even get more than that. Verse 25, for to him who has will more be given. That means if you put some effort, you got something. And if you got something, you're going to get more. But him who has nothing even what he has will be taken away. So if you got something, you get more. If you didn't get anything, even what you did get will be taken away. And the Amplified Bible says, and by force. What force is that? The enemy will make sure. What kind of force will it take? He's going to make something happen in your life. Yeah. He's going to bring something in your life. He's going to try to do something to your kids. He's going to try to do something to your body. He's going to try to do something to your spouse, your marriage, or whatever. He's going to try to do something to your business. He's going to try to do something to get anything that you may have gotten. But because you didn't put any effort to it, you really didn't get what you should have gotten. Because if you give effort to it, it determines how much energy, how much strength, how much power you get out of it, how much revelation you get out of it. And so what I want you to do is get revelation, understanding concerning us declaring that we are empowered. Why? Because God blessed us. And that word blessed means empowered to prosper. Say, I'm empowered to prosper. I want you to get that on the inside of you. I want you to talk to yourself. I mean, if you need to look in the mirror and say, hey, you, yeah, I'm talking to you. You're empowered to prosper. You're empowered to succeed. You're empowered to go over what makes others go under. Now, I don't know if you've ever talked to yourself in the mirror, but I have. Sometimes you got to get after yourself. Get over your pity party. Remember what you've been given. You're empowered. How many of you ever saw, you guys saw the movie Cool Runnings? Remember when Junior's daddy came to get him from the Olympics in Canada? Remember that? Well, they went out to the club, and some of those guys, they won, Bob Sledder from Germany, got in Junior's face, told him he didn't belong there, poking him in the chest and all that stuff. And Junior started getting real wimpy and stuff. And Yul Brenner, remember Yul Brenner? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He grabbed him and said, come here. 
and he took him in the bathroom and he stood him right there in front of the mirror. He said, look in the mirror and said, tell me what you see. I see, you know. He said, no. I said, I'll tell you what I see. I see somebody who's full of power. Somebody who's full of strength. I can't tell you everything else he said. <laughs> but, in essence, what he said, I see a bad dude that nobody's going to push around. And so he said, now, now tell me what you see. And so he said, I see faith. I see power. I see a bad dude. And man, he started saying it. And all of a sudden, he got a hold of him. Yeah. He got a hold of him. Yeah. You all remember the movie? Uh -huh. Yeah, he got a hold of him. I mean, he come out of that bathroom talking about who he was. And he walked right up to that German guy and he started poking him in the chest. Let me tell you something, buddy. <laughs> no, you printer's like, whoa, I wouldn't expect you to do that. And then whenever his dad came after him and they're in the elevator and he says, I want you to come home. You're just a little boy. And so he was going to do it and walk out on his team. But anyway, he looked in that mirror in the elevator. He was reminded of that. Mm -hmm. And he said, and he came out of the elevator, went right to his dad. He said, Dad, when you look at me, what do you see? Well, I just see a little boy. It was Jamaicans, you know, I just see a little boy. He said, I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm an Olympian. That's who I am. And I'm not going anywhere. I did what take, took me to get here, and I'm not going anywhere. Let me tell you something, folks. You're in the kingdom of God. Yes. You did what was necessary to get there. Yes. What you did was you accepted the fact that God sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And you chose to believe that. You declared that out of your mouth because you believed that in your heart and you became a child of God. You became an heir, an heir of God and joint heir with Christ Jesus. You became royalty. The Bible says we rule and reign in our life as kings and priests. We're children of the Most High God. That's who we are. And He created us to live and not die. Are y'all listening? Oh yeah. Psalms 118 says it. We'll live and not die and declare the works of Almighty God. That's what the Bible says. But the devil tries to put something on you. The devil tries to tell you you're not. The devil tries to tell you you're going to die. The devil tries to tell you you're going broke. The devil tries to tell your children are going to hell. The devil tries to tell you that your marriage ain't going, to mer ain't going to make it. When the Bible says that who God's joined together, let no man put asunder. And if no man can put it asunder, don't let the devil put it asunder. And you got to look yourself in the mirror. And I say, a child of God. Anointed with the Holy Ghost, empowered to prosper, empowered to succeed, empowered to overcome. That's who I see. And greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And the devil's defeated and he's under my feet. I see a child of God. That's what I see. Anointed of God. Empowered by God. That's what you see. See what God sees. You got to see it for your own self. That's right. yeah. oh, oh, That's right. And you got to get out of this thought life that if it doesn't happen by Sunday morning, uh -huh. it's not going to happen. <coughs> Faith doesn't have a clock. Right. It doesn't have a calendar. All we know is faith says it is. Yeah. And as far as I'm concerned, once I pray and release it, it's done. It's done. And so from the time that we do that till the manifestation comes, we've got no guarantees. We just know of when. Let me rephrase that. Guarantees of when. We just got a guarantee that it's going to happen. You understand what I'm saying? We just don't have a guarantee of when. But we're guaranteed it will happen. Because if he said it and we believe it, 
That settles it. It's done. It's got to happen. I said, it's got to happen. Say it out loud. It's got to happen. If God said it, and I believe it, and I declare it, and I decree it, it's got to happen. Look at your neighbor and say, it's got to happen. Look at somebody else and say, it's got to happen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Victory's got to happen. Healing's got to happen. Joy has got to happen. Peace has got to happen. It's got to happen as long as we don't give up. It's got to happen. And the devil bombards our mind to talk us in to giving up. And sometimes we do. But I, 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 I'm, I'm tired of, of seeing the devil win victories. Amen. I'm tired of it. Come on. And the thing is, we've got to do it for ourselves. We've got to declare, de, de, declare and decree it. Can we do it for our families? Yes, we can. But somebody's got to do it. And give it everything that you got. Yep. How long do I have to do it, Pastor? As long as it takes. You can't just do it once a day. This is not a one-a-day vitamin. This is like an IV that's there pumping all the time. And as soon as that bag gets empty, you put another one on. That's right. And you just keep doing it. And you keep doing it. You don't just do it once in a great while. You do it. I mean, and listen, I'll tell you what, people in my house, they'll hear me in the bathroom, and all of a sudden I'll be after the devil. Get out of my body, devil. Get out of my body, sickness. Get out of my body, disease. Get out of my body, symptoms. Get out of my body. There's times I'll say some, you know, and Jan say, huh? Well, I wasn't talking to her. I'm talking to the devil. And I'm telling you the same thing I tell my own family, tell my own kids. I'm believing God for, you, for my kids. I'm believing God for them. They're empowered to succeed. And I'm believing God for them to have favor in every area of their life. When it comes to Adam, I'm believing God that he's got favor with music producers. Artists that want to record his songs. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says, you know, that our gift will make room for her and God will bring us before great men. Part of the reason that doesn't happen is because we're not declaring and decreeing that we have that favor. But we do have that favor. Y'all get anything out of this at all? I want this to get in you. I want this to get in you. Because this will change your life. All right. I'm done. Stand up. We're going to make some declarations. Said, uh, I'm a child, I'm a child of, the of the Most High God. And the Bible says, the Bible says at 1 John 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. The devil's a liar. He's defeated. He's under my feet. The Bible tells me. In Colossians chapter 2, in verse 15, that Jesus spoiled principalities and powers and made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it. The Bible tells me that my God through the name of Jesus has given me authority over the devil. So the devil's a liar and he's defeated and he's under my feet. My God, the Bible says, created me in his image and he blessed me that means he empowered me to prosper, 
to succeed, to rise above everything that brings others down. I'm rising up. I'm taking my place. And my God, just like Jesus said, was given favor with God and man. Jesus is my example. And I'm an heir, an heir of God, and a joint heir with Christ Jesus. And as an heir, I've got favor with God and with man. Whoever I need favor for, I've got it in the name of Jesus. And not just regular favor, but divine favor. Because the Spirit of God lives great big on the inside of me. Therefore, Therefore, devil, devil, get out of my body. Get out of my finances. Get out of my family. Get out of my children. Get out of my marriage. I declare, I decree, get under my feet where you belong. And in Jesus' name, I rise above every circumstance, every situation, anything the enemy would bring against me. I cast it down and I step on it in Jesus' name. For I'm blessed. I'm the head. I'm not the tail. I'm above only. I'm not beneath. I'm the victor. I'm not the victim. I'm an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. And my testimony is I believe in I act upon and I'm a doer of the word of Almighty God. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I mean, you ought to be talking like that to yourself every day. I'm serious. Every day. Amen. Do it driving down the road in the car. I mean, people think you're talking on the phone. That don't matter. Hallelujah. You're talking on that gospel line. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, the word is working mightily in you. Point to yourself. Say, the word is working mightily in me. I'm going over the top. Hallelujah. I'm blessed. Say it again. I'm blessed. I'm empowered. And I'm excited about it. God's on my side. Hallelujah. Because he's for me, no one, no one can succeed against me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now just lift your hands and worship him a little bit. Lord, we worship you. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. We praise your holy name. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord God. We worship you, Jesus. Lord, there's no one like you. No one in the heavens like you. There's no one in the earth like you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we magnify you. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you glory because of who you are. Not because of all the things you've done. We give you glory because you deserve it. You're worthy of it. You're the creator of heaven and earth. You're almighty God. That's who you are. Hallelujah. You're Elohim. Almighty. All powerful. All creating. You're El Shaddai. The all sufficient God. You're Jehovah Jireh. The God that provides. You're Jehovah Rapha. The Lord our healer. Lord, we worship you. We worship you because of who you are. Not just because of the things you do for us. We worship you because of who you are. You're our God. You're our Father. We're your children. And we love you. And Jesus, we worship you. We praise you. We magnify you. We exalt you. What a great, great Savior you are. Holy Ghost, we love you. We thank you for living great big on the inside of us. And Father, we praise you for the comforter and the counselor, the advocate, the intercessor, the strengthener, the helper, the standby. We praise you and worship you for the precious, mighty Holy Ghost that lives great big in us. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. All right, you can be seated real quick. Anybody need prayer for anything before we go? Want us to pray for you, lay hands on you, mix our faith with you. If that's you, get up out of your seat and come down here. We'll pray for you.
God's a good God, amen. And he wants you to be blessed. We want you to be blessed. And you said the mother-in-law is sugar, right? Yes, and, and the and, mosquito, and the mosquito thing. thing. Yeah. Her name is Yolanda. Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord God, for the privilege of prayer. We thank you there's no distance and no time in the realm of the Spirit. Even though she's in Brazil, Father, we thank you, Lord God, you touch her right there where she's at. And Lord, we take authority over this condition with the, the blood sugar. Lord, apparently they're just not treating things there the way they do here. Lord God, we take authority over it. It doesn't matter. We command that pancreas to function normal. We command that blood sugar to be normal in the name of Jesus. And Lord, there's something with a mosquito bite that, Lord, some kind of a, a, a condition or disease or whatever coming from that. We curse that thing. I said, we curse that thing. We command that thing to die. Come out of her body and set her free right now. Loose her and let her go. Devil, take your hands off of her right now in Jesus' name. And Father, we pray for this other gentleman who can't sleep. They don't know if his brain's disconnected from his body or whatever. We command it, be connected. Come back together like it's supposed to be. We thank you. You said you give your beloved sleep, sweet and peaceful sleep. We command that body to rest, that body to sleep. Lord God, in Jesus' name, we think of the devil's a liar. He's defeated. Get out of his body, devil. Set him free right now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord God. It's done according to your word. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. That'll heal you right there and set you free. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, first of all, we pray for this lady. Lord God, that says she's got cancer. Cancer, we curse you. Come out of her body and set her free. I said, take your hands off of her, devil. Devil, you're a liar. You have no right to that body. You take your hands off of that body in the name of Jesus. And we command health and healing to flow into every cell of that body. Every rogue cell, come out. Die, dissipate, disappear, and be replaced with healthy cells in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, Lord God. Yes, every organ affected by it, we command it to live and not die. Yes, live, I said, in Jesus' name. And Father, we praise you and worship you for that. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, for bringing her brother home. Devil, you take your hands off of him now. Loose him. Let him go. Let him go, I said. I said, let him go, devil. Let him go, I said. Let him go. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father. He's free. And he's coming home. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on up here, brother.
Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, first of all, Lord, he said he feels stagnant. Lord God, it comes to the things of God, spiritual things. Lord, that's just what the devil wants, to try to hinder us, to try to just slow us down, stop us from getting in the Word, stop us from declaring and decreeing, stop us from confessing the truth of the Word. He wants to just beat us up and just get us to sit down and just, and just grow weary. But Lord, we break the power of that thing right now. Devil, in the name of Jesus, I command you, loose him, set him free right now. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for stirring his heart up, stirring his heart up for the, for the word of God and for the things of God. Stir, restore unto him the joy of his salvation right now. In the name of Jesus, Father, I release that anointing to break every yoke of bondage that the devil to try to put in him. I said, take your hands off of him now, devil. Take your hands off of him. In the name of Jesus. Now, Father, he's getting ready to deploy soon. And Lord God, when he does, we thank you, first of all, we plead the blood of Jesus over him and thank you for protection for him. And we dispatch angels, Lord, to camp round about him to keep him in all his ways. But Father, also we plead the blood of Jesus over his wife, his children, over his family. Father God, that the devil will not use this to hurt or harm his marriage in any way, shape or form. But Lord, you'll keep this marriage strong in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. The devil's a liar. He'll not cause any disruption in the love they have for one another. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, yes, that this marriage will be just as strong when he comes back as it was whenever he left, or stronger, even stronger, Father God. And Father, we praise you and worship you for that. And devil, you're a liar. You'll not, you, you can't destroy what God's put together. And it ain't going to happen in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you for the anointing upon his life. And we thank you, Lord God, for using him for your glory. And when he deploys, we thank you, Lord, he'll speak in other GI's lives and people will be saved and delivered and set free. And Father, we thank you, Lord God. Yeah, you'll bring him safely home to his family. And we worship you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know this open book, but... All right. Also, the guy don't let hardness heart set in my mind because yeah. I'm getting angry. And yeah. I can't let that get in my heart. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we, we lay hands upon them. Lord, we know that, Lord God, your, hand, your hand's on them. We know you got a plan for their lives. And, Lord God, the devil's trying to do anything he can to try to thwart that. But he's a liar. Yeah, yeah. He's defeated. Devil, take your hands off of them right now. I said, take your hands off of them now. In Jesus' name, Father, yeah, that's right. You got to obey me, devil. I said, you obey me. You obey me right now. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that, Lord, his heart won't get hardened. I realize people are not doing the things they're supposed to do, things that they said they would do, contractual things they're supposed to do, that they're not living up to their end of the bargain. Father, we take authority over that devil that's trying to cause that. The goal is to try to break him down. The goal is to try to defeat him. But it ain't going to work. And anything the devil's tried to steal from him, Lord, he's going to have to give it back sevenfold. And Father, we thank you, angels of work. We dispatch you right now to go out and shake, yeah, shake up these individuals. These people that are supposed to pay are going to pay when they're supposed to pay. Father, shake them up in the name of Jesus. Lord, if you've got to send an angel, Lord, to just appear to him and say, hey, you better do what you said you're going to do. Father, whatever takes, needs to take place, we think it's going to happen. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, your hands on them. We thank you, Lord, it's coming to pass. And Father, we take authority over the devil that would try to cause any issues in the home. We break the power of the devil. Devil, you take your hands off of kids. You take your hands off of, yeah, any way, shape, or form. Lord, we command the word. Lord God, to, Lord, to rule supreme in this home. And we loose the Holy Ghost, Lord God, to bring a strong, strong, strong foundation. And Father, we thank you, Lord God. We command things to line up with the word in the name of Jesus. And Father, we praise you for it and give you all the glory for it. Yes, yes, in Jesus' holy name. Amen, amen. Thank you, Lord God. The devil's a liar. He's defeated. You know that. He's a liar. Amen. Glory to God. Yes, son. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord God, he's got a pinched nerve in his shoulder, and some of that's from repetitively, Lord, doing the work he does. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that this nerve I commanded to be released, Lord, in the spine and in the cervical area. 
Lord God, the neck, I thank you. I command it to be released right thank now. Yes. Command healing to flow into this body. Yes. All the pain to dissipate All and disappear pain. and yes. restore total and complete mobility yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. Devil, you're a liar. You take your hands off of him. Yes. I said, take your hands off of him. I said, you obey me. Yes. You have to obey me in Jesus' name. Take your hands off of him now. And Father God, we thank you for your healing power that's flowing into him in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Glory God. Hallelujah. 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 Well, I don't know about you, but I'm plum happy. Oh, me too. Plum happy. Amen. Plum happy. Hey. Some people probably think, yeah, you're plum crazy too, but <laughs> it's okay. I'd rather be plum happy and plum crazy than to be plum no fun. Amen. Plum, plum Glory to God. All right, well, let's all stand. Father, we thank you for blessed, precious, and wonderful people. We thank you, Lord God, for the Holy Ghost who's helping each and every one of us, ministering strength to us. And Father, we give you glory for it. Father, we thank you, Lord God, we are. We are, Lord God, empowered to prosper, empowered to succeed, empowered to rise above. And Father God, we got favor, divine favor with whoever we need to have favor with. Father, we thank you we have favor with lost souls. That, Lord God, when we go to talk to them, there's just something they just sense about us, Lord, the Spirit of God in us, and they just want to hear what we have to say. And, Father, we thank you you're opening doors of veterans because we're stepping into a harvest field, and we're going to reap this harvest. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for a new church building. We thank you, Lord God. Yes, Lord, we're going to, we're going to get it ready for the harvest. Got to have enough room for the harvest. Father, we thank you the harvest is coming in. And Father, we thank you for bringing people in that want to connect, Lord God, with that heart and that attitude. Lord, to rise up, take our place, to be a blessing to our communities, Lord God, and to bring people to Jesus. And Father, once again, we pray, lift up Israel to you. Devil, you're a liar. You take your hands off of them. Yeah, you're overplaying your hand. This thing's going to happen, and God's going to move. And people are going to know that God's still God. And Father, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for protection for Israel. Father, we thank you that you're going to deal with whoever comes against them. And we give you all the glory for it. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. You're dismissed. Shake somebody's hand. Tell them you love them. Hallelujah.